Okay, so we are supposed to look at uh, the GP. AP, we already did that. So the GP, uh, we have been given here some form of a definition here that a GP is a sequence in which each term is multiplied by a constant. It, it, in which each term is multiplied by a constant. A geometric progression is a sequence where in order for you to get the next term, you need to multiply it by the constant. If you remember in the case of an AP, we were saying to get the next term, you need to add the constant, which we called the common difference. So that constant in the case of GDP, <laughs> I was almost saying GDP. In the case of GP, uh, it is called the common ratio. And uh, it's, it is denoted by the letter R. The formula in the case of, uh, the formula of an nth term, the formula of an nth term of uh, a GP, we use this formula here. And uh, like I guided you, I'm sure you already have these notes. This is the formula that we are going to use. I'm sure you remember on the AP, we were using this one, okay? To get the next term, this is what we're using. But here, this is what we shall be using here. This one here. To get the next term, this is the formula. You have A, which is the first term, R, which is the common ratio, then uh, any, which is the nth term which you want, minus one there. That's how it is. And then, if you remember, even under AP there, we had uh, the formula that we used to find the sum of a given number of uh, the terms, okay, in the sequence. So in this case, we have got these two formulas here. You can use either of them, but uh, the second one, the second one here, I want you to see the difference. We use the second one, and the second one is more appropriate to use when R, which is the common ratio, is greater than one. When R is greater than one. Greater than one, meaning when you've got anything up like one point, whatever it is, that is greater than one. 1.5, that is greater than one. Anytime you've got something like an improper fraction, that is greater than one. Two is greater than one. But in the case of the first formula, which is this one here, you use this one when your error is less than one. When you are, It's more appropriate to use the first one. But you could use the, either of them on on any case or on each case, uh, whether R is less than one or greater, but at some point, it will be very tricky for you if you cannot be able to manipulate the signs properly. That's why we are saying it's more convenient to go for the first one if your R is less than one. Less than one, what are we saying? When your R is, for instance, negative, any negative, it's better to use the first one. Because any negative number is less than one. Also, all those numbers that begin with zero point something, zero point something, those are less than uh, uh, those are less than one. Those are less than one. So, you do you see the distinction between these two formulas? Yes, sir. Good. Then the formula that follows here, there, this you will see it, it's very common. It pops up in the questions. So the geometric mean, when they're asking you to find the geometric mean, this is the formula that they need you to use. When they give you two numbers, when you are given two numbers and they're asking you to find the geometric mean, which is geometric mean here, this is the formula that you use here. Just add those numbers and find their square root. 
just add those two numbers and find their square root. That is basically what you are supposed to do. All right? That is basically what you are supposed to do. And then uh, we have, lastly here, and not the least, we have, uh, this is the sum to the infinity. Infinity is like we are looking at an endless uh, kind of uh, a sequence. What is the sum? Okay, the sum to infinity of a given GP. This is the formula that you shall just be using. The first term, one minus the common ratio. So we shall be proceeding to know how do we find the common ratio now? To find the common ratio, how were we finding the common ratio? Yeah, so these, these are the formulas that we are saying here. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. This is just the, for the second one here. This is where we are saying it's supposed to be A minus 1 over R minus 1. When R is greater than, not this, it's like repeated here. That's when we use this one here. And then these are formulas that are captured from a past exam paper. So they are always given these formulas, but there's no harm in you knowing them. Are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your people are very good with yeses, but uh, when I start to ask you to give you the test here, I don't want you to start giving me wrong answers. Because very soon I want us to write a very powerful test. Uh, we'll be very... Don't worry, it's surprising, Lusa. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's what pressure was telling me last time. Yeah, so anyway, very good. So how do we find, let's write this one here. How do we find the common ratio? No, 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 what is that? Yeah, common ratio in this case. Hey. Uh -huh. Common ratio in this case. So we, we yes, divide. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So second, second term divided by the first term. Very good. Second term divided by the first term. Uh, I think, Precious, I, I shared with you this video. In fact, not, not with one, but I, it was on the group, right? On the group, sir. Uh, did we watch it? I did myself. Okay. Uh, what about uh, what about uh, precious? Yeah. How do how do I now? Uh, precious Chilanga, did you watch it up to the end? That's what you had told me. I'm sorry, I didn't give such a report. I said I watched it partly. Oh, you didn't say, you told me that you were going to watch it later on, if I remember well. Yes, sir. Did you finish it? No, I didn't. Okay, no problem. So anyway, this is how we find the common ratio. Uh, in the case of common difference, we were subtracting here, we divide. Is that okay? Yes, okay, sir. Then let us find the first, the common ratio here. So the common ratio for the first question, the common ratio, is going to be equals to, like we already said, it's the second term divided by the first term, which is equals to 20 over 80. And this is going to be one over four. If you like, you can say this will be 0 0.25. One over four or 0 0.25.
That is what is going to be our common ratio. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, you should be copying or writing with me from the agreement that we made. I don't know how many days ago. <laughs> we agreed that you people must copy the questions in advance. I, I don't know if there was even, there's anyone who did, <laughs> who did that. Yeah. Anyway, let us continue. So now we have established that common ratio here is equals to one over four or 0 0.25. Now we want the sixth term. Remember, we want the sixth term. We want the sixth term. So we are saying this is our formula. Are we together? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Our first term is 80 multiplied by our first term I don't know how you may want to write it. Uh, let us say one over four, six minus one. You could also put it as a decimal number. There's no problem. Then this is now going to be equals to 80 over 80 multiplied by, don't worry, you're using a calculator, one over four to the power five. Are you here? Yes, sir. Yes. Very good. Then uh, use your calculators and give me what the answer is here. <sighs> So I found five over 64. Five over 64. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the rest of us? Eighty multiplied by... Oh. Hello. Yeah, well. so I was the instruction. Sorry, it slipped out. No, I said you punch this on your calculator. Let's see what you're getting. Okay. Now. Yeah, well. So um I brought the calculator punching. So how do we enter this one? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what you were talking about last time, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. These are questions I had. That's why I watched the video not completely at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, I get your point. Maybe send me a picture of your calculator because these calculators are different. Okay, let's do that later because that, it, that will consume a lot of our time. I'll find time when we can have a conversation around the, the calculator functions. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you remind me about that. Uh, it's very important. It's very important. I, I okay. understand your point. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but in the meantime, we can easily say that. Um, I can cancel this, like, what did you say? It will be five over 60, five over 64, right? Yes, sir. that's what I got. Yeah, 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 that's the correct answer. Five over 64, five over 64, five over 64. 
but you could do change this into a decimal number, which whatever it is going to be. Are we together, people? No. Huh? No, sir. Where now? <laughs> Just <laughs> because if we point ahead without some of us knowing how this is functioning the calculator. No, no, no. Like punching on the calculator aspect, I said, I'll, I'll teach you. What was the 65, 64 pounds? <laughs> it's the calculator that is doing the job now. Yeah, that's the thing. So, because by guessing. No, no, it's not guessing. You're using a calculator here. So look, so you have got 80. Multiplied by when you when you when you expand this one here, it's like one over four multiplied by 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 another one which is one over four. So when you multiply these two here, they will give you just these two. They will give you something like uh, eighty multiplied by one over sixteen. I'm just dealing with the two here. Then these others here, they'll give us 1 over 64. Are you getting that? Oh, OK. So this 16 into 80, we can say 16 here it will be 1. 16 into 80, it will be 5. That is where the 5 is coming from now. So we end up with it. This will be now this 5 over the 64 that is here. But this is something that is very easy when you're using a calculator. And on the calculator, this uh, 5 over 64 could as well be given as a decimal number, which will be 0. Point blah, 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 blah. Yeah? Do you get that? I get it now. OK, I hope so. <laughs> What is the next question there? I'm asking for the next question. To find the nth term. Okay, so to find the nth term, all what we shall do here, we'll just say nth term as usual, we don't know what our n is. So, and this one, I don't want you to do a lot of things here. When we start to simplify it, we may end up with the different answers. So what I would advise is... Uh, we just write it like this. R, sorry, that's on R. We can replace R here. Uh, so I'm of the view that once we say one over four here, then n minus one. We may need to leave it at this point. We can simplify it further than this, but I know we'll be distracted along the way. But let's leave it just like this. We just replace the first term and the common ratio, then we leave it there. But we can go beyond this point, but that would be, uh, it would be difficult for some people to fall. So let's leave it at this point. I think you'd be given a full mark. Are we together? Yes, sir. Then we have, uh, the sum to infinity, the sum to infinity, the formula is A, first term, one minus R. R here, you can use 0 0.25. It's more convenient. A is 80 over one minus 0 0.25. Hello? Sir. Yes, yes. Oh, 
here on the earth stem. Go on. This is the answer. Yes, 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 yes. This That's the answer. answer. You leave it there just. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so I think. You find the answer here. This one is giving 79.75. Hmm? What I'm punching here is giving 79.75. So this will be something like uh, 80 over 0 0.75. Isn't it? Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Yeah, what are we getting there now? Uh, me, I found 106.6666667. 80 divided by 0. Point Seven five. Let us punch that again on our calculators, precious. So the sum to infinite is going to be one zero six point six 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 seven. It goes on like that. When you round off this to three significant figures, as the instructions are in the exam. You need to have one zero seven. As your answer, but you first of all write it as it appears on the calculator. Is that okay? Hello? Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes. Okay. Hey, this one. Okay. Let me do this one. Uh, let us do this one. Let's find the first term here because to find the eighth term, you first of all need to find the the first term. I mean the common ratio. Sorry. We need to find a common ratio. So to find the common ratio here, what are we required to do? Finding the common ratio here. What are we required to do? So our common ratio is equal to the second term divided by the first term. Second term is one over two divided by the first term. Are we together? Yes. Now, you people are using a calculator. Remember, this is paper two, so don't don't give yourself too much pressure. If you are you have a calculator that is kind of funny, this is uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 divided by one. What do you get? You're just punching these things on your calculator. What are you going to get? When you divide, uh, huh? Hello? 0 0.5. Yeah, it will be 0 0.5. It will be 0 0.5. So our common ratio is 0 0.5. Common ratio is 0 0.5. So now, 
this is our common ratio. Now we are supposed to find the eighth term. So we're going to say this is our formula. And we want to find our eighth term here. So the first term is one multiplied by 0 0.5, then eight minus one. One multiplied by 0 0.5 to the power seven, which is just the same as 0 0.5 to the power seven, because when you multiply it by one, it will still be the same thing. So, if Precious, you are telling me that you have a challenge on how to write 0 0.5 to the power seven. Hmm? Not exactly, sir. I just want basic calculation. Okay. okay. I... Anyway, for now, let's find 0 0.5 to the power seven. What are we getting? So this one we're multiplying 0 0.5 seven times, right? Yeah, but you don't have to do that. Just use the power. Okay. That's the thing, I can't see the power. No, you do this 0 0.5, then you go, there's like a symbol on the calculator like this one. Then okay. you press seven. It depends on the type of the calculator that you are using. What's, what's... Using a sharp, uh, sharp PL531, whatever, DAO, D A Y D A L. Anyway, I have to, you send me a picture later because they, they are different, the function. Those of us that have managed to get it, what is it? Zero point zero zero seven eight one two five. Okay, seven. So I'm saying we're going to have a zero point uh, zero zero seven eight one two five. Yeah, that's what I'm not forgetting. Then you round off these to three significant figures. There's that instruction always in the exam. So end up with 0 0.00781. If you want, you can say three significant figures. Sorry, three significant figures like that. Okay. We have just five minutes to uh, in this session. Are we good? Hello? Hello. Are we okay? Yes, sir. I'm okay from my end. What about others that are quiet? I've responded, sir. So I said yes, sir. Alicia and Noreen, are also okay? I'm fine, sir. Okay, so... Uh... 
let's let's skip b for now we go to c uh because this this uh yeah let's skip b we go to c in the interest of time Uh, so as usual, this is uh, we are racing sum to infinity is going to be a over one minus uh, r, which is common ratio. So this is going to be one over one minus 0 0.5. This will be one over 0 0.5. What do we get there? Hello? Sorry, two. Yeah, so this is going to be two. Okay? Yeah. So we have uh, to, I'll, I'll tell you on the group, if we'll be using this link again, or it will be another one, I don't know. This platform can be challenging. For now, we have to leave it here.